Okay, the final regular lecture of 2019-2020 Organic Chemistry. We made it. Uh, we do have, um, not a lecture, but we'll meet. Well, I guess it's kind of like, a, it is like a lecture. Uh, tomorrow for review. But this is the final like, lecture with new material. And uh, I got a slide animation, a uh, Google slide animation. Hopefully you guys already had a chance to look at it, but if not, you can look at it still. And it's a dicarbonyl synthesis. And uh, yep, this is all my animation stuff. So some of these nerds can get real chatty. So uh, you'll get to look through that, enjoy it. We'll go through it after this. Uh, oh, and then we're gonna finish up chapter 23 and start 22, I think. We'll see how much time this takes. And then, uh, yep, we got the final exam coming up. It's cumulative. We'll be mo more focused on the new material, which has all pretty much all the old stuff too. And then uh, some details about it. Uh, look over the old exams for practice, and uh, you can see things like we haven't done lately, like review the sigma and pi bonding diagrams. Should be easy when you look back over it now. And then the radical halogenation al alkane of alkanes. You know the. Remember, we, we, we put a lot of time into that in 12A with the mechanism, the regio, and the stereochem, and the energy versus reaction coordinate diagram, and Hamilton postulate. I think I'll put one of those on the exam. I haven't written it yet. And then the Newman projections, look at those. Review those real quick. The Fisher projections, cyclohexane chair conformations, and Newman's of those. And then linear pi molecular orbital diagrams and electrocyclic reactions. We haven't done that just recently, so it'll be good to review. And then, you know, I was thinking about maybe putting an NMR coupling tree problem. Because uh, we finally seem to be pretty good at predicting coupling. But if the trees are nice too, we'll see. So, uh, and then some of the less used reactions of late review, like esponification, which is actually ester hydrolysis, really, which is new. Carbocation rearrangements, ozonolysis, dihydroxylations. So just check them out. It will come back real quick. And uh, on the review on Tuesday tomorrow, I will, well, today's Saturday for me. Um, this is like a Monday lecture, but I'm going to release it early, I think. So so whenever, Tuesday, <laughs> if you want, we'll go over all that stuff. And then focus on studying for the final exam this week. You want to just, you know, kill that and then do homeworks because that'll help you with the final exam. But if you have like lab reports you, you want to do, um, maybe hold off on those. So after the, the final exam and then I'll let you turn those in late up until next Tuesday. So not Tuesday of finals week, but Tuesday after finals week. And then, oh, that was weird. The final exam review is going to be Tuesday this week, 10 a.m. <clears throat> I'll just do like a Zoom session. And if you could make it, come on by and we'll go over some problems and I'll record it too. Practice some chair confirmations, things like that. And I'll answer questions, whatever you got. And then exam three corrections due to Monday, I think. Yeah, I said they were due Monday. So if you're watching it Monday, it's today. Uh, no after exam quiz. And the key is in the uh, on Canvas under assignments, exam corrections, exam three corrections. And the final exam times, let me know if you don't want to be in your normal lab time. Like if you're in a Monday, Wednesday lab time normally, then you don't have to tell me anything if you want to take it then. But let's say you're like, oh, I want to take it later. Just let me know. I've gotten about 10 of you. Email me and I'm keeping track of everybody. And then, uh, so, yep. And then don't cheat as usual. It's supposed to be closed notes, closed internet, open brain. And then find out if your transfer school wants you to take the organic chem ACS exam. Um, I, I was looking to do it a little more. Usually, I've you know, I've only, I've only had to, submit ACS exam scores for like two students throughout all my years. So I think it depends on what department you go into, what school you go to. But uh, just look into it and then uh, if you if you need to take it, we could do it. We could do it after the semester if you want to, after things calm down a little bit and get it over with. And then I think there's, a, there's an online version now too for this time. So just talk to me about it. Look into it first. You might, you might not even have to do it. And then uh, new homeworks are online. Uh, you've probably already seen these. Uh, three points for that one and that one, but then this one, since it's kind of last minute, I'll give you two points extra credit if you do that one. And then uh, new discussion areas. I've actually got some questions, I think, from one of these chapters currently. I, I'll go answer them. And then locker checkout. So I'll be doing the locker checkout. Uh, I was going to do it after the semester, actually. So um, do you, 
If you want, you can donate your goggles and, and or lab coat for extra credit. Just let me know. If not, I'm going to, you know, you know, put a rubber band around and probably wreck goggles and lab coats and we'll get them to you eventually. And then we have a last virtual student of the week for the 2019-2020 season. A microbiology major transferring to UC Davis in the fall. So you guys uh, that are transferring to Davis, hopefully you'll be able to go to school soon. And when you do, you'll see your friends all over the campus. It's nice. Uh, has two sisters, a middle child, and has a favorite sister, but won't tell us which one. Um, went to three high schools, Wood Creek, a high school in Pennsylvania, and graduated from Truckee High School. What are What is Truckee? I don't remember. Are they Bruins? I don't know. Truckee... I don't know. That's bad. I gotta look it up. Okay, wor works as a tr tutor for Sierra College Tutoring. Biology, microbiology, and general chem. And wants to be a college professor. Nice. Good career choice. Loves to read and write for fun, not school. And listens to podcasts and music. Struggled a lot, no chem, but is actually, it's one of her favorite classes she's ever taken. And she's going to miss all you classmates. And, uh, no pets, but has a seven-year-old daughter, Elena. So you guys probably already know who it is, huh? There's Elena. And there's Amanda. Too much studies, but she also likes the class. <laughs> All right, so, I'm, so I was saying I, I made up this uh, beta dicarbonyl synthesis animation. I'm going to go through it kind of quick, and then you guys uh, should go through it. <clears throat> slower on your own okay here we go. uh i'm on the last slide here we go this is linked in the uh, mechanism quiz area so we're going with the nerd edition revenge of the nerds their time has come we we'll start with the claisen condensation and here's rainier ludwig claisen so in the Claisen condensation, as we saw last lecture, you have a ester. <coughs> you treat it with base first, and then you uh, add acid to quench it, and you wind up with this Claisen condensation. Two esters come together. So you want to be a good nerd, you want to number your carbons. One, two carbons. Those are the main two there. So one, two. One, two. And then this is the ester part of the product, the ketone part. And so... This alpha carbon is alpha to an ester and a ketone. And then that beta there, it's a beta to the, to the ester. And we call this beta dicarbonyl. And, uh, how do we refer to it as an ester or a ketone? Since esters are higher priorities, just set by the old chemist deciding on the rules, it's a beta keto ester. And this ethoxy is a strong electron donor because of its resonance. And the sp3 carbon is just a weak electron donor. So they both influence the pKa of that alpha carbon. And its pKa is about 11 because it, when it's deprotonated, it has three resonance structures. Yep. And then here we go. We got another, oh, we got the curved arrow mechanism, all color coded. Got the roach hinge there. Nice roach hinge. This first step's not very product favored. It's an addition elimination mechanism. You can see if you're going from pKa of 25 to 16, that's gonna, not going to be very product favorite. Um, but later steps will help us. So now we have a strong enolate nucleophile and a weak ester electrophile, but they're strong enough to react. So we put the roach hinge in there. Boom, boom. Got our carbon-carbon bond. Number our carbons. Make sure we didn't miscount. That's a bad leaving group, so you know what I like to do during the elimination. I like to protonate it on the way off. And I know that basically looks the same, but I don't know. It's just like the pattern that we follow. I think it's good. And then uh, now, are we done with the reaction? No. This uh, beta keto ester has got a pKa of 11. So under these basic conditions, it will be deprotonated. And it will have three resonance structures. I just have the one of them there. Should throw some resonance arrows, probably. So this step is important because it drives the reaction towards the product side. So ask Monsieur Le Charlier about that. And then uh, 
you work it up with acid, and there you go, you got it. Your beta dicarbonyl, which happens to be a beta keto ester. And then we got some more practice. So this one's a little different. So here's a quick way to help you draw the overall product without, <coughs> without um, doing the whole carburetor mechanism. So you wind up, you'll draw the one of the esters to the left, and you draw it with the alkoxy side to the left, and then the alpha carbon side to the right. And this is the molecule that can, it's going to turn into the enolate, the nucleophile. It'll be deprotonated at the alpha carbon and the beta carbon point down. I think it just helps you see the final product better. And then this is the ester set up in the same way, alkoxy to the left, alpha carbon to the right. And then the beta carbon on this guy can be like it's drawn now, or it could be down. It doesn't really matter how you draw the, the, the electrophiles beta carbon. Um, and then you're going to get an additional elimination between the alpha and the beta carbons there. So you see how it's connected right there? The alpha of this guy, he was made into an enolate, did an addition, tetrahedral intermediate, elimination. So you wind up with this, and then when you number your carbons, you see one, two, three, one, two, three, the red and the blue. One, two, three, one, two, three, we got it. And if you keep your alkoxy group here, the same as your base and your solvent, you won't get transesterification. All right, more practice. So this one, yeah, that's drawn up well. There it is, number your carbons. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Not too bad, right? On this one, I start off with the electrophile. The, the S are not drawn in the way I was drawing it before, so I'm gonna rotate it around. And then take the nucleophile, put its beta carbon downward, so then it's quick to see. See the nerd, the nerd likes it. So it's quick to see that there it is. Number your carbons. We got it. And then here we are. Now we're going to do a beta dicarbonyl synthesis, but this one's the Diekmann condensation. So it turns out. Uh, Bill Gates is learning OCHEM right now. I heard there was an interview done with him recently. My friend was telling me he was on the radio, and, it, and they asked Bill Gates, what's he doing during this quarantine time? And he goes, oh, I decided to learn organic chemistry. So you and Bill Gates are both learning OCHEM right now. I wonder how he's doing. Probably already mastered it all. So intermolecular Claisen overall reaction. Yeah, I'm not sure. Just so they, so Diekmann gets a name for this reaction, but it's just intermolecular Claisen. So what happens here is you have two esters on the one molecule so they can react with each other. So we're going to twist this around to see it. So we're slowly twisting this guy up into a, turns out to be a six-membered ring. This alpha carbon will become the enolate. It's going to do an additional elimination on the carbonyl. And there we'll have that six-membered ring like that. You can go through it slower as you, and then you can number it. Oh yeah, and if you, uh, if you make an error, just control, alt, delete, restart. Reboot. Okay, here we go. We got a young uh, Steve Jobs here. We're going to do diketone synthesis. So here, this is actually a new reaction. You're not reacting an ester with itself, but you're reacting an, a ketone and an ester. So the, the ketone winds up being the nucleophile. So other than that, it's the same reaction. So the ketone is more acidic. It's got a pK of like 20 versus 25 for the ester. And that's because the sp3 carbon is a weak electron donor, where the alkoxy is a strong electron donor. And so this guy winds up being your nucleophile because it's more acidic. It happens more often to get deprotonated. And then when it is the nucleophile, the enolate adds to the carbonyl carbon additional elimination. And there we have it, number of carbons. Got those three, those two. So these three correspond to those three, those two. Boom, right there, huh? So you know the mechanism. I know it's a, if you're good with the Claisen condensation, this is basically the same thing. Uh, and if you get stuck, if you get a different product, just think differently. And then more practice. Here we go. So I'm rotating my ketone around to have it like I had the other one, and then I'm going to have it beta carbon bent down so it's easier to see when it reacts with my ester. It's the, this carbon, 
this uh, enolate is going to be an enolate here. It's going to react with the carbonyl carbon. So what's my product look like? That one. So I've got... Oh yeah, and you notice uh, I switched things up here. I didn't match my alkoxy with my base or my solvent, and it doesn't matter because there's no ester in the product. So you don't have, there's no transesterification worries here. So if I number my carbons though, I got these five, and there they are again, and then I got those three, and there they are again. Got it. So logic will take you from A to B, imagination will take you anywhere. All right, let's start on the whiteboard. Okay, next up is the uh, Dieckmann condensation, which is really just the intramolecular Claisen condensation, which you already saw in a little animation, but I'll go through one on the whiteboard too, to do the mechanism and everything. So uh, let me number this guy. My number across from carbonyl to carbonyl, I have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons across. And I'm going to make an enolate out of either carbon 2 or 5 and have it add to the opposite carbonyl. So let's go with the carbon 2. So if I were to make the enolate there, then imagine if this twists up around, it would look like so. Six. So it looks like it might make a six-membered ring, but we know that it's not the carbonyl to carbonyl. It's the alpha carbon of one side to the carbonyl of the other. So that's carbon two to six is what we're looking at. So my final product for this will be a five-membered ring. And it's going to have the ester off of this side, the way we're doing it. <clears throat> and then... Let me number this for you. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's six. So carbon six will have the other carbonyl. That's our beta keto carbonyl. And then I like to wiggle the one pointing down just to be consistent with the other one I did. So I'll wiggle this guy. And then let me erase this so I can get uh, the rest of it drawn up. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And then now let's do the mechanism. So, what's going to happen is to start off with your diester, and you just pick one side randomly to be deprotonated. I like to go with the left side. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have methoxide here as my base. Uh, I don't really need to draw the sodium. So the methoxide is the base and it's matching my methoxy ester. So I don't have to worry about transesterification. And that's going to come by. Protonate the alpha carbon. To give me my enolate. file on this side and then my ester over here is a weak electrophile and they're good to go because you need at least one of them to be strong right 
So my enolate is going to drop down its lone pair, hinging on the alpha carbon. It's going to swing over, tack that carbonyl. And let's number these carbons, make sure they make sense. We've got carbon one, two, three, four, five, six carbons across. But I'm actually just going to make a five-membered ring because I'm adding from carbon two. So as I was saying, it's an addition elimination mechanism. This is the addition part. First, I'll have the tetrahedral intermediate here. And then uh, I want to have this methoxy leave as a leaving group, but it's a pretty weak, bad leaving group, right? So I'm going to put later on the way out. I know it's kind of silly because I'm going to be making a methoxy in the same way, but I don't know, I like to do it. So here's our elimination step. Okay, so am I done? Is the reaction over? It's not. This guy uh, is this alpha carbon here. It has a ketone and an ester alpha to it. So it's actually going to be fairly acidic. pKa of this one is about 11. So under basic conditions like we're at, that's going to be deprotonated. and just put it up to the ester to start just at random and this deprotonation is actually a good thing for the reaction because it's product favored so it helps pull everything along by the shot ladies principle so here we go And uh, just to review, to make sure we're good at this, let's do the resonance for this guy to show why it's a pKa of 11. So the negative charge is on the ester oxygen, and it's on the alpha carbon. And then it's also on the ketone carbon. So there's three resonance structures for this conjugate base. There we go. And then um, the reaction is for part A, it's done. It's just waiting until we add the acid workup to finish it off. And so I can do that from any of these resonance structures. Hydronium comes along, protonates it like so. Hinge it there.
voila. That's the Dieckmann condensation, just an intermolecular Claisen condensation. Okay, so we just saw in the Claisen and the Dieckmann condensation In both of those, you had two esters make a, a beta keto ester. So you go from two esters to one ester and a ketone. Um, next up, we're going to look at the uh, how to make a beta dicarbonyl. And well, this is a beta dicarbonyl as well. Not just a dicarbonyl, but a uh, diketone. So we're gonna go, instead of ending up with an ester product, we're gonna end up with a ketone product, or a diketone. So how are we gonna do that? What we're gonna do is we're gonna react an ester plus a ketone. Not two esters, but an ester and a ketone, and we're gonna wind up with no more esters with uh, two ketones. So if you start with two esters, you end up with an est one ester. If you start with one ester, one ketone, we're going to end up with two ketones. So let's do that. It's a beta diketone synthesis. So let's do it. Uh, we could start off with uh, maybe cyclopentanone. That's a ketone, right? And then we want to add to this an ester. Um, let's go with uh, maybe, I'm going to go with an ethyl ester or a methyl ester. We could go with, let's go with a methyl ester. Uh, we'll go with the isopropyl ester, switch it up a little bit. And I'll put Okay, so what's going to happen with this guy is we're going to make an enolate here of the ketone. Why would we make the enolate of the ketone, not the ester? Well, both can happen, but the ketone will happen more often because the ketone's pKa is 20, where the ester's pKa is 25. So this carbonyl, this alpha carbon is 25, or either side of this is 20. So um, is that a big difference? Yes, this is on the log scale. So this means that this acid is 10 to the 5. So this is 10,000 times a stronger acid than that. So the ketone is going to be deprotonated more often. It's going to wind up becoming the nucleophile. And then this will wind up become, this becomes, you're going to do this, becomes the nucleophile. This is your uh, electrophile. And the electrophile is a weak electrophile, but we're going to make a strong nucleophile. Uh, so how do we do this? We add a base. Um, and it doesn't really matter that we match up the base in this case, but let's just do it anyways for, for the first time. So let's say we have like sodium isopropoxy, isopropoxide and isopropyl alcohol. And then we follow that up with the acidic workup. So it's looking just like clays and condensation or Dickman condensation conditions, right? And it's pretty much the same thing. You're going to get a bond between the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. So my product's going to be look just the same. The difference is being that uh, instead of getting a keto ester, I got a diketone, a beta diketone. See, this is going to be the alpha and the beta carbon. Either way, you can reference it. And if I number my, if I count my carbons, one, two, three, one, two, three, it looks good, huh? All right, let's look at the mechanism.
My base is going to come along and deprotonate the alpha carbons there. There we go, making an enolate, a strong nucleophile. And now that we have the strong nucleophile, it can react with our, elect our weak electrophile. And we got, again, addition. Draw a hinge on the alpha carbon. Add into the carbonyl to make the tetrahedral intermediate. This enolate can swing up and add wedged, and or it could add dashed. And then when it attacks the carbonyl, it also creates a stereo center. Because it can attack the carbonyl from this side or the other side. And so we get this tetrahedral intermediate. And then um, this is not a great leaving group, but we can make it a leaving group by protonating it on the way off. All right, we got that, and then you think, are we done? Reaction's over? That's what our final product looks like, right? But wait a minute, what's the pKa of this guy? It's doubly alpha, so it has a carbonyl on either side of it, and so do you think it's the same pKa as we saw with the beta keto esters, where you had a ketone on one side and an ester on the other? This one's got two ketones. Its pKa is even lower. PKA is like 9 for these guys. Because this sp3 carbon and that sp3 carbon are only weakly electron donating. So, yep, we're going to definitely get this deprotonated under the basic conditions. And it has two more resonance, just like you saw with the beta keto esters. So you can practice drawing those out. I'll for sure have a mechanism like this on the final exam, and I'll ask you to draw the resonance, so it's good to practice it. And uh, so once you get this resonance stabilized conjugate base, it's, it's done with part A of the reaction, and then the acid comes in, and it produces your final product, which you already had it there, but <clears throat> we still want to show the deprotonation because it's important. This product favored step helps increase the yield overall. There we go. Um, 
this guy being formed over here. He gets protonated. And then we wiggle this as well. And we put a new H there to show that, just to emphasize that was added. And there we have it. That's the uh, beta diketone synthesis. You end up with two ketones, but the mechanism's basically the same, right? No. It turns out the uh, dicarbonyls that we're making, they're great uh, for alkylation. They alkylate really well. So let's make up one, and I'll show you what I mean. This will be simple. It's just SN2. So let's go, maybe we have a ethyl ester. There we go. If we have this uh, beta, an alpha beta keto ester, we have this beta keto ester, you can alkylate it by getting the negative charge back here. Remember, this guy's pKa is around 11. Relatively acidic. So you can deprotonate that and then add a, an electrophile like a bromide. Alkyl bromide. So let's do it. So uh, we'll add first a base. What do you think would be a good base for this? Something to deprotonate that fully, pKa11, but not mess with the rest of the molecule? The ethoxide, right? There we go. So we got this in ethanol. <coughs> If you use the ethoxide, we don't have to worry about transesterification. And now this probably looks a lot like we're just doing clays and condensation, but instead of adding acid in the next step to you know, protonate this again, we're going to add an electrophile. So say we add a bromide, and this is an SN2 reaction. You do that, and you wind up alkylating that alpha carbon. carbons added. One, two. And hopefully you could see the mechanism in your head already. It's not complicated for us at this point. Since you're all OCHEM superstars. Finishing up the whole year of OCHEM. Um, and uh, I like this material in that it's kind of new, <clears throat> and we're introducing, I'm introducing it at the very end of the semester, and you got your final exam right away, but since it's actually not that new, I don't feel so bad, and also, well, what am I supposed to do, stop teaching? Here we go, right? There we go, and then, of course, this guy has more resonance. You can do yo those if you want. I'll ask you to draw that resonance on the exam. Okay, so we make the enolate, and is this product favored? PKA11. PKA16. Very product favored. Equilibrium. 10 to the 16 minus 11, 10 to the 5, looking good. And then we introduce our electrophile and we just get a straight SN2. Roach hinge down there. We know how to alkylate the alpha, doubly alpha, alpha carbon of a uh, beta dicarbonyl. This will work with uh, beta diketones as well. And uh, beta, uh, I forget the term for it, but when you have an ester on both sides.
Okay. Now for decarboxylation of beta carbonyl acids. So this I consider like the only fully new reaction of this chapter. <clears throat> and it's a really cool one, you'll like it. It's not hard. So um, that's a nice thing about ending the semester with this chapter. Everything's gonna feel like review, except for maybe this one, but just draw it out a couple times, you're fine. I'll definitely have this mechanism on the final exam. So decarboxylation of a beta carbonyl acid. So here's what we're talking about. We got our carboxylic acid here, right? And then there's our alpha carbon and our beta carbon. So for this particular one, for this particular molecule, it's a beta keto acid. It's got a ketone on the beta carbon. All right, let's see what we get here. What happens is you lose a carbon dioxide. That's the decarboxylation. Minus CO2. And where's that CO2 coming from? It's coming from this carbon and those two oxygens. So you get the ketone and carbon dioxide. And that's gas that can float away. So if you have a carbonyl and, well, relative to the carbonyl, beta, if it's beta, it has an acid at the beta position, or if you have a carboxylic acid and then beta to it, there's a carbonyl, if you just heat it up, just straight heat, you can uh, decarboxylate it. It's like the molecule is uh, like us, it's respirating, it's, it's decarboxylating, it's letting out carbon dioxide. So let's see the mechanism for this one. So for the mechanism, you want to draw it up uh, in a six-membered ring. We've been seeing that all year, huh? Molecules like to react in six-membered rings. So watch what I'm doing here. I twisted around this bond between the alpha carbon of the acid and the acid's carbonyl carbon. If I twist that around, I can get a nice six-membered ring transition state. Mechanism doesn't, it, it's not a one stepper, it's got a few steps to it. But you'll see after the very first step, it's it's uh it's review. So what's gonna happen is imagine this oxygen is a hinge and this pi bond swings out, takes that hydrogen. Looks very similar to the McClafferty huh? but we're not in a radical situation, we have full headed arrows. And now this oxygen is also a hinge, so now that Sigma bond is becoming a pi bond down there. And finally, if I put a hinge here, this swings this way, and you'll see I'm gonna get initially the enol, or the ketol in this case. And carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide gas can uh, evaporate away. And we have our enol, and we know about enols. They're alkenes, not ketol, enol. You have an alkene and an alcohol, enol. And we know about them, they tautomerize <clears throat> to, uh, in, in they, they lie generally heavily on the equilibrium side of the ketone. So let's do that tautomerization. So when we did these tautomerizations of an enol before, we were under clearly acidic or basic conditions. With this one, we're just kind of like neutral, a little bit acidic with the acid. So this is how I like you to draw out this one. Draw out two of them, and you're gonna see they're just gonna start switching atoms. 
Imagine a hinge here on this uh, enol, lone pair dropping down, similar to a enol lady. There we go. Because we need to get to make the ketone, to make this ketone, you need to add another hydrogen there. You have three hydrogens there, only two, but I'm going to be adding the third. <coughs> And then this guy, you'll see it's it's needing to lose a hydrogen off of the oxygen because that that oxygen has no hydrogen. It lost its hydrogen. So the right molecule has made progress towards the final product because it lost its hydrogen. The left molecule has made progress because it had three it has three hydrogens here now too, which it needs. It started with only two. So hopefully you can already see what's going on. <clears throat> they just finish up by reacting again. Hinge here. There we go. And then we've got our tautomerization done. A new hydrogen being right there. Not too bad, right? There's only one new step. After this, this is all review, huh? Let's try this one again, actually, but let's do it with, uh, we'll do another example, and we'll do this mechanism again, but I'll do it um, with different colors, pens. We'll see, make sure we see all the arrows. All right, since uh, you don't have a lot of time to review this stuff before you actually take the exam, I want to give you this nice example problem, and I want you to work through it. I want you to get very good at this. I want you to leave this video lecture with like feeling, okay, I got that. It's got to review it a little bit. <clears throat> I don't want you to leave it thinking, oh, now I got to study a bunch to learn all that stuff. So let's just get good at it now. So um, on this one, um, it's got a lot of good stuff in it and uh, hopefully no errors. We'll find out as we cook through it. And then, uh, so it's probably a good idea to see if you could pause the video now and do it. Right when you get stuck, just come back and then once you get over that hurdle, pause again, continue on. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, so pause, come on back. All right, so what's going on with this guy? Initially, brominate the ethane easy, right? There we go. And then the cyanide's added, we got an SN2 there. So we've just added a carbon, correct? And then when you have the nitrile, if you use acid and water, it hydrates the nitrile to the carboxylic acid, and it needs to be one, two, three carbons long, because we started with two, but we added another one. So we should have the three carbon acid here. I'm gonna draw it up this way, uh, just to help us see it. I'm setting that up that way for the clays and condensation later. All right, and then um, that guy is waiting to be reused down here. So we take our propane now, brominate that. Hopefully you see that's easy, right? The secondary bromide will be major. And then water and cool. Blast from the past a little bit, what's that about? Keeping it cool, not heating it. That's SN1. So the SN1 will give us the alcohol as our major product, not the E1, because it's not under heat conditions. And then when we add our carboxylic acid and our alcohol, we heat it up. This is like the, <clears throat> what's it like? It's like a banana oil synthesis, right? We're making an ester. There we go. We got our three carbons from above and our three carbons from our alcohol. All right, and then when we take an ester, we react it with base, and oh, look at this, I did not match the base. Do not match. I finally threw it at you. I've been warning you about that. So if I have an isopropoxy, Ester, and I'm going to react it with methoxide and methanol. 
I'm going to get my clays and condensation, and I'm also going to get transist aerification. It's not that big a deal. I'll show you. So for our clays and condensation, how are we going to get this guy? So hopefully you've already clicked through my Revenge of the Nerds animation. Thanks for the uh, theme, Jeff. And then you can see that we should have the nucleophile like that with the beta carbon down. And then we draw up our electrophile like so. It's beta carbon could be out to the side or down, doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we're gonna bond these two right here, the carbonyl carbon. So in the mechanism, remember, you'll make an enolate. That enolate will add to the carbonyl tetrahedral intermediate addition step, and then an elimination will occur, and we'll get the carbonyl back. And then, of course, that'll be pretty acidic. It'll get deprotonated, acidic workup, reprotonated. So, oh, and then the, the, the uh, isopropyl epoxy, at any time, even maybe before the clasin, after the clasin, it doesn't matter both times, you're going to get the methyl ester out of this. So you can see we got our clays and condensation. Let's number those carbons, make sure we're doing it right. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So we got our clays and condensation done, and we also uh, is transesterified. And the transesterification mechanism, uh, you should doyo that. Doyo this whole mechanism. Doyo all these mechanisms. Even the brominations, at least one of them, because we're going to have one of those on the final. The radical brominations, pro initiation, propagation, all that. All right, so the transesterification is easy. It's just the methoxide is going to add to the carbonyl, tetrahedral intermediate, and then when it kicks out, it can kick out the isopropoxide and leave the methoxide, and it's just a concentration thing, because this guy might be at a concentration of like half a molar, Whereas the methanol might be like 17, 20 molar. So it'll, it'll basically, it's like washing away. Your, your isopropoxy gets washed away by the methoxide, like um, when we add D2O to an NMR tube, washed away the OHs and the NHs. Okay, and then next up, we add base again. You're like, what are we doing? Um, because we want to set up the new uh, alkylation of this alpha carbon. And when you look at this, this guy is tertiary. Don't let it scare you. They're great nucleophiles. It can still alkylate again, especially with the, such a non sterically hindered elect nucleophile, uh, electrophile like that. So, this is going to re deprotonate carbon 2. This carbon 2 here in the middle is like, what's going on? I was deprotonated, reprotonated, now I'm deprotonated, and now you're going to be alkylating. Um, does anybody see a shortcut I could have taken? Yeah, I could have put the methyl bromide right there and had the alkylated product already. I didn't want to do that right now because I want to clearly outline everything for you first. So what should we get for molecule Y? Following. And we're not transesterifying again. We'll get that. And you'll notice uh, I didn't wiggle anything because we had a methyl on there, carbon 3, and we added a new methyl from the methyl bromide. So I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll like letter that. Let's call this one A. If that's carbon A on the final product, then <clears throat> this guy can be numbered, say, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then that one is A, the new one. Okay, and now if I have an ester, I add water and acid, I'm gonna hydrolyze that, correct? So I'm gonna wind up with no longer the methyl ester, but the carboxylic acid. There we go, and um, 
This is a carboxylic acid, and it's not just an acid, it's a beta keto acid. So whenever you see, that's my beta carb, if you see a carbonyl at the beta position, then the molecule is ready to just pop. The reason why I say pop is these molecules, you just heat them up and they produce CO2 gas. And if, the, if you have a molecule like this as a solid, it actually pops like pop rocks, kind of pop, pop because the CO2 is popping out of it. And that's actually what's happening with pop rocks too, CO2 is popping out of it. So we've got our pop rock reaction here. And we're going to basically just lose this whole CO2. That whole thing is going away. Well, the hydrogen is going to replace. It's going to wind up initially on this oxygen and the enol. And then there's going to be deatomerization. And so our final product will be ketones. And CO2 gas just bubbles away. So let me make sure I didn't lose any carbons here. I should have my like one, two, three from the original. You know, one, two, three there. And then I had a one, two, three A, huh? What do I have over here? I've got like the, the two, the A and the three. Oh, and that's the one from the carboxylic acid, huh? Kind of a weird one, how huh? it pops off like that. And I did say I wanted to do this mechanism again, because I want you to be good at it. I want to color code it. So let's see if I can color code that one for you. The decarboxylation. At least the first step. I'll let you do the tomerization on your own. That's not new. I guess the, actually the tomerization is a little bit new in that it's not in a clearly acidic or basic solution, but I think we're good with that. So let me draw it up initially. Uh, I guess I'm doing this one backwards. That's okay. Let's do it backwards of the way I did it before. I just gotta remember I need a six number drink. All right, there it is, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, A, yes. So let's color code this guy. I'll make, uh, this one will be a good one to have a color on. Let's say I got red, blue, green, and uh, let's make this one a color too. And the bond that's breaking has got to be a color, huh? Okay, let's see if we can make this look cool. I'll make that one blue. I've got a blue one there. Go ahead and make this one red here. And then we'll go with a Green, let's find a good green. Here's green. Yeah, I think we're looking good there. Um, sometimes the green is hard to see, huh? I'm gonna move in cut tight on this one. There we go. Okay, I like to think of it as the red pi bond hinging on the oxygen reaching out like that. So this oxygen here is a hinge. And then the blue bond between oxygen and its hydrogen, hinging on the oxygen, so that oxygen is the hinge. Swinging down there. And finally, a hinge here and the green swinging that way. <clears throat> and we get. CO2 with a blue bond here. And then the enol on the other side. red bond to, between the O and the H. There we go. And a couple lone pairs still on that guy. 
a green bond here for the enol pi bond. Is that it? That's it? Yeah, nice color coded. Let's yeah, practice that a couple times. And then you'll carry on to this guy tautomerizes to the ketone. And this equilibrium is like 99.999% over here, and very little of it is in the enol form. One, two, three, zero, so I go one, two, three, four, I think. As I was saying, I want you to be very good at this before you uh, finish this video. So I got some more practice for us. And on these ones, um, they have these names that are like the common names. I don't really like them. Um, I, don't, I don't get, I think it's like something was lost in translation. But I still want to mention the names to you so that if you see them in the future, it's not so foreign. So the first one is the acetoacetic ester synthesis. So we just basically did this, but I added more at the beginning. Um, so in the aceto, acetic ester synthesis, you have a alpha beta keto ester to begin with, and then you alkylate in this first step, you can see deprotonate SN2. Then you hydrate, so you take your ester in, and you make it into the carboxylic acid, then you heat it up to decarboxylate. Your final product in this one will have um, the ketone with the bromine on the end and that got decarboxylated. So in this one, you're gonna end up with a ketone. So let me write that down before you try it out. So for the acetoacetic ester synthesis, you wind up with a, a ketone. Now, the reason why I don't like the name is it sounds like you should wind up with an ester, huh? Because it's ester synthesis, but you wind up with a ketone. But you don't even need to know this name for you to fill in these boxes and understand it. All right, then, then there's the melonic ester synthesis. And again, this nomenclature is funny to me because you're not gonna wind up with an ester at the end. At the end, you're gonna wind up with an acid. And you're gonna see, we started with a ester ketone in this one. Here we're starting with an ester ester. These are called malonic esters. This is diethyl malonic ester, or diethyl malonate. You don't have to know the nomenclature, but if you look it up, that's what you'll find. Malonate. Oh, diethyl malonate. And uh, so, what we're going to do, if you if you didn't even notice there's esters on both sides, you could see, oh, I'm gonna make the enolate, alkylate, and, tricky tricky, don't get tricked, uh, I have an ethyl, ethoxy group here, an ethoxy ester, and I'm using uh, isopropoxy and isopropanol. So I'm gonna get transesterification as well, which actually in the long run doesn't matter because I'm gonna hydrate them twice. So the two esters on both sides will become carboxylic acids, and then when I heat, one of them will get decarboxylated. And since I had two acids, I decarboxylate one of them, you should get one acid in the end. So don't be so worried about the names, I'm just throwing it out there so if you see them online. It's actually really hard to look up, if you Google search, just like anything to do with malonic acid, it always goes to this ester synthesis, because I was looking up ways to make this initially, which we won't learn, I'll just mention it maybe afterwards. It's interesting to see the pattern, but um, why don't you guys pause the video, fill all these out, and then I'll come back and do it for you. Okay, welcome back. So over here, we're gonna make the enolate first, right? Part A, and then it's gonna do an SN2. So our product here will be the alkylated Beta keto ester. And I'm adding one, two, three carbons. One, two. Did I add the same exact three carbons the last time? I don't know. That's all right. Okay, and now if I add water and acid, I'm going to hydrolyze that ester and make the carboxylic acid to set us up for the decarboxylation. Alright, here we go. 
go. And then um, decarboxylate. So when I decarboxylate, I'm going to lose this whole guy here. And well, that hydrogen will wind up initially here and then down there. So here's what I'll get. I'll get CO2. Bubbles away. And my ketone. I can draw it that way. Like that. Uh, let me number my carbons, make sure I got this right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or I could draw that ketone more like a. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could draw that way too, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, there we go. So in the acetoacetic ester synthesis, which you don't need to know the name of, you start off with a, an ester and a ketone, and you wind up with just a ketone. What about over here, where we start off with two esters? We alkylate, make the enolate, and before the alkylation, you can get the transesterification, or after, at some point, you're gonna get the transesterification. And then you're gonna get SN2 to give us our di alkylated diisopropoxy malinate. Uh, wait, did I wiggle this? That one should be wiggled. That one should be wiggled. Should this one be wiggled? No, a little bit tricky, huh? Because it's got the ester the same on both sides. So we're just gonna add those three carbons like that. No wiggle. I'll go one, two, three. Okay, and now I've got esters on both sides. Unlike here where I only had an ester on one side. I've got an ester on both sides. So when I add the acid and water, I add excess and I hydrate both sides, so I get a diacid at this point. So this ester was hydrolyzed to the acid, that ester is hydrolyzed to the acid. And anytime you have a carboxylic acid with alpha, beta, another carbonyl, you can decarboxylate with the heat. So if I have an acid and in the beta position I have a carbonyl for another acid or for an ester or a ketone or for an ester, anything that's a carbonyl right there, aldehyde, it'll decarboxylate if you heat it. And so I can take off either side, it doesn't matter. Let's say just to be consistent, I'll take off this side. though, make sure I didn't forget any one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Or I could have written this up like so. So one, two, three, four, five. Looks good. So in the Malonic ester synthesis, you're not making an ester, you're starting with the malonic ester, diethyl malonate, and then you're producing a carboxylic acid at the end. Because you started with two esters, you're going to lose one of them as a decarboxylation, and then you're left with the acid at the end. Over here, you started with an ester and a ketone, and you wind up losing the ester as the decarboxylated acid to leave just the ketone. To finish off the chapter, uh, I'll look at some beta dicarbonyl synthesis summary, and then I got a retro. And uh, this will be the last chapter. We won't do the 21 uh, benzene derivatives. It's got some good stuff in there, I like it, but we've done enough. 
So this is it, our final new material. It's not even new, I'm just doing some problems with what you've already learned. So I guess this is new, but, <clears throat> but uh, I won't test you on this one. So here we go. I have an ester. You treat it with the base and the alcohol and the acid workup. So if you start with an ester, and it's actually two esters, right? So two of these react. We get our plays and condensation. Our alpha oxide matches up with our alpha oxy, so no transesterification. So when you start with two esters, you get, let me double, double check this, one, two, three, one, two, three. So from two esters to one ester plus one ketone. So two esters, one ester, one ketone. Then we learned about the uh, beta diketone synthesis. So <clears throat> on this one, we use a ketone. So we have one ketone, one ester, and what do we wind up making? Hard not to draw benzene. Sorry to draw the pi bond there. Uh, what do we wind up making? We wind up making a beta keto ketone, a diketone. So we have one ketone, one ester, two ketones. So you see how you always lose an ester? One ester becomes a ketone. ones. Okay, and uh, let me number the carbons on this guy. So I've got like a <clears throat> carbon one and a two there. One and a two. All right. So now this mechanism, uh, this reaction we didn't learn, but I figure since we talked about the melonic ester synthesis, I should show you just, just briefly how you make it. So I bet you have no problem with this. Instead of using uh, an ester or a ketone, we have what's here, this is called a carbonate. You know, and that's related to, you know, when you have carbonate like this. CO3, 2 minus. Do you remember carbonate from general chemistry? And uh, this might be your last chemistry lecture, some of you, huh? done the year of general chem and this is the final lecture of organic chem. Well, not the final lecture. Go to the review on Tuesday. It's going to be very good. I hear the reviews run by the guy who writes the final exam. So it'll be very informative if you get to go to. All right, so I've got the carbonate. This is diethyl carbonate. All right, we've got the diethyl carbonate. You can see what's going to happen. You make the enolate, it adds tetrahedral intermediate, eliminates, and your final product is the. Oh, oh, oh I didn't draw that right. The. Uh, Diethyl malonate. Okay, and um, so we started with an ester and a carbonate. So it's like you have three esters, huh? So this is definitely an ester, and this is like an ester and an ester. And what do we wind up with? Two esters. So you still lost one ester out of the three kind of things, right? And let me number my carbons, make sure I did this right. I got one, two carbons there, one, two carbons there, and then let's call this carbon A. And that's like carbon A. So even though we didn't go over this synthesis and the mechanism, I'm sure you have no problem drawing it. Okay, so.
There's a nice little review of that stuff. And then I got a retro for us to end off the year. And this one's a doozy. This one's tough because it has the, uh, the kind of like, a, not kind of, like, like ozonolysis, you chop off carbon or carbons. So in a retro where you have to like chop away carbons to get rid of them, it makes it real challenging. So this one's pretty tough, but it's a good review. Let's do it. We've got one, two, three carbons there. And we got CO2 here. I'll call that like A. So it looks like we're making a carboxylic acid probably huh, out of that. So let's assume this came from that. Maybe that's the A right there. And then maybe one, two, three here. And then it looks like I got a one, two, three there. Oh, and then another one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, and then, oh, this is interesting. So I have the A, which is one carbon. But I said I was gonna chop something off, but, <clears throat> and we do chop something off. And then, uh, well, let's just do it. I'm trying to think ahead too far. Let's just start. All right, retro. These ones are kind of, they're almost not nice for exams. So retros with these, I have to be careful with them. Like this one, this one would be maybe a bit too much on an exam. Okay. So I'm taking this guy and I'm saying, oh, it came from a decarboxylation. So I'm gonna be careful about this, keep the right number of carbons over here. I'm definitely gonna be numbering some stuff. And I'll, I'll say, oh, I got an ethyl there and then this guy here. So let's go with this being I have it on A, one, two, three. A, one, two, three. And I have the one, two, three here. One, two, three there. And then like a one, two, three here. One, two, three there. Yep. And then I, the thing that I'm decarboxylating is the carboxylic acid here because it's got a beta keto there. And then that carboxylic acid could have come from the ester, and we have a choice on the ester. I'll just go with the isopropyl X ester, because that one's gonna be easier to make from that. <clears throat> Here we go. Looks like I got all the correct carbons, yeah? So I did hydrolysis, heat, decarboxylate, and then this guy, we're gonna say, comes from an alkylation. And it could be an alkylation of the ethyl or the three carbons. I'm gonna go with the three carbons because I have a three carbon to begin with there. So I have my ethyl still on there and this is a bromide that I'm gonna make the enolate SN2. All right, and then when I look at this, if I'm careful about it, I'll notice, hey wait, this is coming from Claisen condensation. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're looking okay. Back that up to the ester. See that? This guy would react with the other the equivalent molecule. I'll make it up, why not? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. It's kind of got sloppy there. Write right, that up better. This is the final retro. Well, for chapter 23. Alright, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, we got it, right? Oh, and then the bromide, let's finish that off. That can just come from your alkane. Okay, well, how can I get this? Ester, well, esters can come from the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. Remember, these two are equivalent molecules, right? 
And I've got my one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, yes. My alcohol can come from the bromide. I can do that SN1. It can also come from uh, saponification of a carboxylic uh, ester. Let's just go with that. And, uh, or it can come from the alkene, whatever you want to do. Okay. So, but I have the bromide here, and this can, the alkene can come from the bromide as well. And I've already said the bromide can come from the alkene there, so we're good on that. Now this carboxylic acid, it's got four carbons to it, and I got three there and one there, so I'm gonna have to uh, have that come from carbon dioxide and uh, organometallic, say Grignard, Grignard, which comes from the bromide. And that bromide is on the end there, so it's gonna have to come from the alkene, anti Markovnikov, and then the alkene comes from the bromide, which can come from the alkene. All right, so now we'll do the synthesis. All right, here's, for, here's our synthesis. Start with the propane, and I'll brominate that. Secondary bromide will be major. And if I treat that with water and keep it cool, I can make my isopropanol. And uh, that's gonna be SN1 major, right? Then I will treat this bromide with base. I wanna make that into the alkene. I'll use my <clears throat> E2 superstar, potassium T butoxide and T butanol. And then I'm going to make this into the primary bromide by anti-Markovnikov hydrobromination. Got to add the hydrogen peroxide in there. Get my primary bromide. And then I'll make this into the Crignard. Add the uh, magnesium diethyl ether. Now I'm set up to add on that carbon and get my carboxylic acid CO2. There we go, we got our carboxylic acid. Let me count this out, make sure we're doing this right. I have one, two, three carbons. Now I have one, two, three, four. I added a fourth one out with the carbon dioxide. And I need an ester. So I have my alcohol up here. I'll add that alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol, some acid, heat it up just like you did for the banana oil synthesis. All right, we got our ester, and now we can do quasin condensation to get our beta keto ester. So that's gonna be uh, the base. You know what, for the heck of it, let's do this. How can we make this into the base? We can add sodium metal. There we go. It's got our sodium methoxide. We made it ourselves fresh. And isopropyl alcohol. Follow that up with an acidic workup. All right, and that'll give us our beta keto ester. And it's got to be a four carbon thing. One, two, three, four. And that's one, two, three, four. Let me make sure I did that correctly. Let's number it. One, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four, there we go. And uh, the pKa of this guy is about 11. So it's pretty acidic. It can be made into the enolate at that double E uh, alpha carbon and then alkylated. <clears throat> We're going to alkylate with our bromide. So 1A will be, uh, I'll use the isopropoxide again since it's, I'll concern myself with the transesterification. Get a little bit sloppy. I'm trying to squeeze it in on my little board here. I'll tell you what I'll do at the end. I'll take a picture and I'll just add those pictures at the end as like an answer key that's easy to read. Okay, so I've got my isopropoxy, isopropoxide to make the enolate, and then I follow it up with my bromide to alkylate. Now I still have my ethyl on there, but I've added the isopropyl. Let me keep at counting these carbons, make sure I'm not losing or adding any. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, yep, looks good. Now I want to set this up to be decarboxylated, so I need to hydrolyze it first. Just add water and sulfuric acid. So now my ester will be converted to the carboxylic acid. There we go. And when you heat that up, you could actually heat right here too. Just do it all at once. But I was just showing it separate. If we're new at this, heat that up, decarboxylate, and we wind up with ketone, uh, which I'll go and I'll just add the two carbons this way, and the isopropyl down. I could have switched those, don't matter, but we should number this to make sure. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to do a one, two, three on that isopropyl, one, two, three along there. There we go, and we lost it. This came off as CO2. The gas just floats away. There we have it. The full retro and synthesis for the last chapter of your 12 AMB careers. Hope you liked it.